Hello there fellow Star Wars fans and welcome to the video. In today's video I will be talking about everyone who is at the table at the Death Star. Some are pretty well known with lots of information about their life while others are not as well known with not quite as much information about them. But at the end of this video hopefully you'll know their names and know a little bit more about them. Now Tarkin is a really well known one so I'm going to start with him first. Tarkin was a Grand Moff which was one of the highest positions in the Empire. He was born on the planet Eridu. He joined his planet's military and fought with them for a while until he retired from military where he would enter politics and become governor of his planet. He would swap back and forth from being in the military to going into politics. Eventually when the Republic became the Empire, Palpatine made him the first ever Moff and had him watch over the construction of the Death Star. Trek Moloch was a high general aboard the Death Star and served as the army operations chief. He was born on the planet Korolog. He joined the Empire and served with it for many years. He rose in the ranks and eventually became a high general. Seward Cass was the chief communications export aboard the Death Star. He was born in Patrim in the Sesuana sector, the same sector that Tarkin was in charge of. He joined the Imperial military and helped the Empire fight the Alliance. He served as Tarkin's aide and the chief communications export on board the Death Star. Aristramati was a general in the Empire. He was born on the planet Matacor and he served during the Clone Wars, becoming one of the first non-clone commanders. When the Republic switched to the Empire, he was given the rank of general. While he was general, he and his men were attacked and despite the fact that he won, he was left blind and scarred. His face was left permanently disfigured and he was forced to get cybernetic eyes to help him see. He retired from military service to become a senator. However, he was plagued with nightmares and forced to quit. Right before the destruction of the Death Star, Tarkin offered him a position to serve alongside him on the Death Star. Although his mind was no longer fully there, he agreed to help Tarkin. Wolf Yularen is a pretty well known one. Admiral Yularen was popularized after his appearance in the Clone Wars. He was born on the planet Anexus and fought during the Clone Wars and served alongside Jedi like Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka Tano. Admiral Yularen disagreed with how the Jedi allowed young children like Ahsoka to hold as much power and rank as they did. If you remember in one Clone Wars episode, Storm over Ryloth, Ahsoka refused to listen to Anakin and caused the death of several clones and injured Yularen. He continued to serve the Clone Wars and when the Republic became the Empire, he joined the new Imperial Security Bureau. He would eventually leave and lead his own task force. By the time of the Death Star's completion, he was a colonial and was assigned to work on the Death Star's command staff. Mortimer Bastwas was an Imperial General who was born on the planet Durakan. He was an avid hunter and learned skills that helped him in his military career. He joined the army and eventually became a general in the Imperial Army. He was extremely loyal to the Empire and Tarkin, which is one of the reasons he was sent to the Death Star. Cassio Tej was the head of the Imperial Army operations. He was born on the planet Tepasi. He joined the Imperial Army and throughout his career was obsessed with studying the seemingly magical power that both Vader and Palpatine possessed. He continued to rise up in ranks. He was a brilliant strategist and came from a well-known political family. All of these things led Palpatine to promote him to work under Tarkin on the Death Star. The last person on our list is Conan Antonio Mati, also known as the Guy Vader Force Chokes. He was an Imperial Admiral born on the planet Sesuana. He joined the Empire and rose in the ranks. He had a reputation for being ruthless and extremely loyal to the Empire and the Emperor, which Palpatine loved. He was promoted to Admiral one year before the destruction of the Death Star. Now interestingly enough, he didn't believe in the Force throughout his career, believing that the Death Star was the most powerful force in the universe. So those are all the people who are at the table on the Death Star. I know not all of them have a lot of information about them, however hopefully you have a better understanding about them and they are not just nameless faces. Thank you for watching and may the force be with you.